It's sweater weather, y'all. Hey guys, thanks for being here. I'm Christina and I'm a reseller. Here on this channel, I do a lot of thrifting. I find new homes for old things that have been left behind. And most importantly, I do a lot of laughing. You can follow along my journey on Instagram at little.black.hanger and you can shop all my amazing finds on Poshmark at Little Black Hanger without the vowels. Good morning, y'all. Happy Friday. Welcome back to my channel. I hope you guys are having a great day. So today we are going to be doing um, the second video in my series on this channel. Can we even call it a series if I've only done one other <laughs> one other video? Um, but that is the different types video. So in the first video, I showed you guys the different types of necklines. I gave you some keywords that you can use to describe those necklines to really help your items on Poshmark show up in search. So that's what we're gonna be doing today, but we're gonna be doing a sweater weather edition. Boop, 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 boop. Because it is sweater weather, y'all. Well, at least it is for most of us, but for me, it is not sweater weather, only in my house. We don't get fall until like December, so. I'm just gonna crank my AC up and pretend it's winter. I was actually inspired to do this by Laura Von V. She has an amazing Poshmark closet full of vintage goodies and her photographs are stunning. She has an awesome Instagram page as well and she's a YouTuber. So I will leave all of that linked down below if you guys wanna go check her out and go show her some love. But she was doing on her Instagram story just a little mini breakdown. I think she did about three slides of like some different um, like knit and sleeve types. And I thought what a better way to continue that series than to do a sweater weather edition because I know it can be kind of hard to describe sweaters. It's a sweater. I Like what other keywords can I use? <laughs> so I'm gonna help you with that today. All right, so let's get right into it. Alrighty, so we are gonna start with necklines. Now necklines are pretty simple for sweaters. We all know the classic V-neck. Um, then you have a higher up cut. It's kind of like this, um, and that is called a crew neck. This is probably the most common neckline is the crew neck. Um, you see it on sweatshirts, just regular sweaters. So that is a very common term that you can use. A step up from a crew neck would be a mock neck. So it comes up to about here and it's like a turtleneck, but it's like half of a turtleneck. So it's like, it doesn't have the fold over. It's just straight up and it comes up about half as far as a turtleneck would. So then of course you have the turtleneck that comes up to about here, just depending on the turtleneck. And it typically has a fold over flap. It like it has extra fabric. Last but not least, I'm sure there's more, uh, but these are the, the most common ones that I've seen um, is the cowl neck. So like a turtleneck, it has a lot of extra fabric, but it kind of lays down and looks almost like an infinity scarf. So now we're gonna get into sleeves. So here we have the balloon sleeve. It comes in at the cuff and it's puffy at the bottom. It kind of reminds me of like a pirate. If you think of a pirate shirt, their sleeves are called balloon sleeves. And these are very popular on vintage sweaters, especially 80s and 90s sweaters. Then we have the dolman or the bat wing sleeve. And that's where there's extra fabric here in the underarm area. It's extra fabric. You could fly away. It's like a sugar glider. Think of a sugar glider and that's a dolman sleeve. Okay, so then we have the circular yoke. And this is a new term to me. I didn't know that this was a thing. Um, so I'm learning right along with you guys. Um, but a circular yoke is basically where there's no seam. So like on my shirt, you can see the seam right here. This is considered a drop shoulder because it's a little farther down. But the circular yoke, this is very common in sweaters because it's just, you know, it's knit. So you don't really, I mean, technically you wouldn't really need a seam. You're not sewing like fabric together like a shirt. So this is very common on sweaters. So, and typically it'll have a pattern where it goes in like a circle like this. You guys know what I'm talking about. So then we have the drop shoulder. 
um, which again is a little farther off. So like a typical shirt would be seamed a little bit higher. So this one has it a little bit lower. And again, this is very common in sweaters because they tend to be oversized. So a drop shoulder is a very common sleeve in a sweater. Let's get into fits. The first fit I wanna talk about is the most common one, which is an oversized or boxy or boyfriend or draped sweater. So these, like I said, are very common in the vintage sweaters. A lot of sweaters are made oversized and boxy, so you can wear them with leggings and what have you, whether it's a men's sweater or a women's sweater. These are good keywords to use when marketing men's sweaters to women. Um, describe it as a boyfriend sweater. It's a boxy fit, it's oversized. All right, and then of course you have just the classic fitted sweater. We all know what that looks like you know, it's a woman's sweater, it's fitted, it's not oversized, it's a fitted sweater. It's pretty self-explanatory. Um, so then you have the crop sweater. Again, very self-explanatory, it's cropped. It's a little shorter, that's it. Um, and then the wrap slash faux wrap. So um, what would be considered an actual wrap is if the sweater actually opens or the garment actually opens, it has a like, tie to physically close it. Now, if it's a faux wrap, it could just be sewn like this. See where this like cuts over the over this one right here. So this would be considered a wrap if it was sewn down um, and it didn't actually open. So that's what that's what makes it a wrap or a faux wrap. I do want to mention cardigan styles as well because it kind of falls into the sweater category. Um, so really quickly, obviously you have the classic cardigan. It has the buttons. We all know what a cardigan looks like. Um, then we have the open front cardigan, which is what this would be considered, what I have on, because uh, it doesn't have any buttons. It doesn't close. It's just an open front cardigan. So then you have the drape or waterfall cardigan, which also doesn't have any buttons. You could pair that keyword of open front with um, the drape or waterfall keywords. Then you have the quarter zip mock neck. This is very common in men's sweaters where it zips down to about here and then the neckline usually comes up to about here if you zipped it up all the way. Then we have the shawl collar and this is another one that I didn't know. So when a cardigan has that little like collar, I mean, it's just a cardigan with a, I'm trying to make it more complicated than it is. It's just a cardigan with a collar. Um, it's very popular in vintage men's sweaters. So then some two pretty self-explanatory ones. You have the long cardigan, which is what I'm wearing. It's just straight down. It's a long cardigan. It covers you, but it's nice for the cold. Um, and then you have the cropped cardigan, which, you know, is cropped. Last but not least, let's get into the different types of knits because this is where I think a lot of us have a hard time describing knits because you just simply don't know them. I know I didn't know a lot of these terms. I know the basics, but you know, it's it can be difficult. So let's get into these knits. And again, I'm gonna be popping pictures on the screen so you have a reference. So when you see these, you know, okay, that's this kind of knit. Let's get nitty. <laughs> is that funny? Probably not. First up is probably the most common one that most people know, and that is the cable knit. It's this raised knit. It's chunky, it's big. You guys know what cable knit is. Then you have cashmere, which is not really a knit. I mean, I guess it is technically. Um, everything is technically like woven, right? But cashmere um, is something that you will in your sourcing journey, you will come to, once you touch it a lot, you're gonna know immediately that it's cashmere without even looking at the tag. It's super soft. It has almost like a fuzzy texture to it. And it's a very like thin knit, if that makes sense. Um, so I did wanna mention cashmere because you know, it's very popular in the fall time. Who doesn't need a cashmere sweater? This is one that I didn't know. And I'm probably gonna say this wrong, Luckily, I'm spelling things out on the screen for you. It's called bow, bowsel, bow, bossel, 
Bousel. It can also be called nubby knit. It's kind of like bunched up almost in like these little like balls. It's usually a specific type of yarn. I don't even know how to describe it other than nubby. Like that's a great term for that. But it's just one of those things where like it's hard to describe, but once you see it, you're like, oh, that's a nubby knit. I get it, it's nubby. Alrighty, so then we have the Fisherman's Knit. It's a vertical knit and it's kind of like ribbed, but it's more spaced out. It's not as tight. Then we have the Twist Knit, which is also a vertical knit, but this time it's kind of like this. It's a twist knit. I'm trying to make things way more complicated than they are. These are typically made with different colors of yarn so you get that kind of like speckly multicolored effect that's a twist knit then you just have regular old plain knitted if there's no kind of like pattern to it no distinguishable pattern and it's just you know one flat no lines no ridges no fanciness it's basically just knitted um, all right, so then of course, like I was talking about with the fisherman knit, we have the ribbed knit and this is a pretty tight knit and there are intentional lines. It's just like ribbing on like a t-shirt or a top, um, but with sweater material. Then we have the eyelash knit, which was very popular in the 90s and early 2000s. It's where the sweater looks, I, it looks hairy. It looks like you're wearing a, a puppet. <laughs> a good way to remember that is to think of a bunch of eyelashes on your sweater. Alrighty, so that about covers it for all the different types of sweaters. I hope you guys learned something. I hope it was informative in some way, shape, or form. Thank you for always being here to hear me ramble. I'm gonna be doing more videos like this in the future and I kind of want to do them seasonally. So I think the next one of these videos will be different types of jackets and coats. Um, so let me know down in the comments below if that's something that you're interested in. Also, if you like these types of videos, please be sure and give it a thumbs up. It really helps me out and helps me know what kind of content you guys want. If you haven't already, go ahead and hit that subscribe button and join our family. We would love to have you. I put new videos out every Wednesday and Friday, and I will see you guys on Wednesday. <laughs> Bye, guys.